As one of the most culturally beloved and generation-defining franchises of all time, GTA is not just a video game, not just a series of titles talked about across now two decades, but a bona fide phenomenon. One that routinely makes Rockstar and Take-Two around $5 million a day. Yes, really. Starting life as a family-friendly arcade racer called Race and Chase, a glitch during development saw police car models begin to ram into other testers. This sparked one of the most profitable lightbulb moments in gaming history, as wanted levels and general anarchy-fueled gameplay soon followed. GTA now has a plethora of main installments and just as many spin-offs. It's up there with McDonald's and Disney as one of the most well-known properties of all time. But which game is best? I'm Scott from Oculture.com, and these are the 10 best GTA games ranked. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10, Grand Theft Auto Online. Though it's become increasingly impossible for newcomers to hop in and have a good time without devoting hours to grinding or even resorting to microtransactions, GTA Online is still an astonishing new precedent in game design. Literally one giant sandbox of communities, power struggles, skill sets, and unlockables, many groups of people live entire digital lives inside the confines of this revamped San Andreas. Rockstar have continually bolstered this with insane amounts of DLC, taking GTA Online away from what you'd expect out of its namesake, awesome innovations like land, sea, and air races, level packs that let you construct daredevil speedruns, in-depth heists, and more properties to invest in than ever, all have truly capitalized on the notion of roleplay that the original San Andreas first started. Number 9. Grand Theft Auto Episodes from Liberty City I mean, look, they're all going to be called Grand Theft Auto, so maybe we just go with subtitles from here on out. Overlooked, thanks to GTA 4 being the first notable dud in the series. Oh dear God, comment section, I know. Most people agree and other people disagree. You'll just have to argue it out. Both sizable DLCs, The Lost and the Damned and The Ballad of Gay Tony, include all the character and personality that was lacking from the base game. Where GTA 4 focused on Nico Bellic's satisfying enough revenge tale that doubled as a comment on how manufactured the American dream can be, Lost and Damned is essentially Rockstar doing a Sons of Anarchy style tie-in. Main man Johnny Clay Clevitz is a tough-talking biker with a heart of gold, someone who fits the GTA protagonist mold but allows for a great story and character beats alongside. The Ballad of Gay Tony sees Rockstar tease out what a modernized Vice City might feel like. There's everything from all new radio stations to a story that takes you from neon-lit nightclubs to the tops of skyscrapers, only to then let you base jump all the way back down to the bottom again. That sense of freewheeling, cartoonish anarchy that Vice City and San Andreas reveled in yet were missing from GTA 4, it's all right here. Number 8. Liberty City Stories one of the smartest decisions Rockstar ever made, revisiting the iconic industry-shaking Liberty City on PSP was a masterstroke. Not only because of how they found a way to pack a full GTA game into a handheld, but because many of the lessons learned from future installments were retrofitted. Alongside bikes on the streets, better controls, and shooting was Rockstar experimenting with what a GTA multiplayer mode could be. Slaughtering each other in the six-player Liberty City Survivor deathmatch using any means necessary, ramming players into the scenery when street racing, blowing up bases and commandeering tanks, it was brilliant. Granted, all of this could only be played in local ad hoc with an assortment of PSP-owning friends, but as a furtive step towards GTA 4 and 5's online modes, it can't go unnoticed. Number 7. Vice City Stories Doing for Vice City what Liberty City Stories did for GTA 3, Rockstar were clearly looking to improve on what was already one of the best open-world games of all time. Vice City Stories came complete with even more retroactive improvements. Basic control and vehicle variety upgrades were standard, and finally being able to swim was a godsend. This also continued the original stellar soundtrack, but what really stood out was a neat empire-building mechanic. Like San Andreas' respawning turf wars, protagonist Vic Vance would have to look after a number of different properties that could be upgraded and staffed with lower-level goons. Interacting with this crew provided missions that improved the buildings themselves, all while you went out and secured more turf, ensuring your daily take was always on the rise. Bonuses like clothing sets and better weapons came from maximizing your time, micromanaging all of this stuff, and it remains one of the only times Rockstar put such a mechanic into a GTA game that didn't feel like a meaningless distraction. Number 6. Chinatown Wars from open-world add-ons to a game that was all about getting lost in minigames and new mechanics, Chinatown Wars was Rockstar's second attempt to make GTA work on lower-spec hardware. Rockstar knew that traditional GTA as it was post Vice City, San Andreas, and GTA 4 wouldn't work, and playing Chinatown Wars is almost like they thought, hmm, what would GTA be like if it was developed by Nintendo? Seriously, it almost channels WarioWare with all the minigames and cutaways, letting you manually fill Molotov cocktails, kick open windows if you fell in bodies of water, assemble a sniper rifle, crack safe codes, there's loads to do. It being such a drastically different GTA did put many people off, but go in knowing what to expect, and this is a great shakeup of the standard formula. Number 5. GTA 4 
GTA 4 represented Rockstar trying to force the franchise to grow up, completely misreading that the reason so many of us adored playing it was because of how ridiculously over the top and fun the 3D trilogy was. This sequel swapped the majority of that tonality for a remade Liberty City that was awash in a sea of brown and grey. Nico Bellic was witty and sharp enough, but his comments and attitude towards the criminal life were forever at odds with the way we wanted to play him. It gave birth to the critical term ludonarrative dissonance, when playing a game in a certain way breaks the character as they're established. And for the most part, it's at the heart of why this installment just didn't click. Still, Rockstar's debut of the Rage Engine powering everything did make for some brilliant physics-based fun, with driving that, yeah, to be honest, was very skid-happy, but it all factored into some cop chases that channeled 70s action movies perfectly. Gunplay is some of the best in the franchise, and honestly, you still do have to admire what Rockstar were trying to do. It just didn't hit home. Number 4. GTA 5 Speaking of not hitting home entirely, GTA 5 feels like something of a course correct after GTA 4. Back with a Vengeance was a far wackier goofball tone, mixed with some tabloid headline chasing scenes like a protracted torture sequence. Straight gameplay wise, this is the best of the bunch, with the idea of switching between a trio of protagonists letting you drop into all sorts of in progress crimes and sequences. It stumbles and falls regularly in the script department, as you can tell Rockstar was struggling to match their idea of what GTA is with that of the wider fandom and the public overall. Grand Theft Auto was bigger than Jesus after over a decade of great reviews and positive buzz. Many critics still cite GTA 4 as not a roadblock but a one off masterpiece, meaning that whatever the next numbered installment was going to be, it somewhat had to please everyone. Thankfully, Rockstar playing it safe delivered a sales hit like nothing else, though going through it side by side with the earlier games and especially GTA 4, there's a lack of purpose and passion that ultimately defines how it lands here. Number 3. GTA 3 like some punk rock garage band finally affording amps big enough to shake the trees of a neighboring cul-de-sac, GTA 3 was all the pugnacious, America-satirizing spirit of GTAs 1 and 2 done bigger and better than ever. Play today and you'll encounter a few hiccups with a finicky lock-on and a complete lack of checkpointing for some really awkward late-game missions, but mostly this is just as playable and enjoyable as ever. With one of the finest open worlds ever designed, teeming with stunt ramps, hidden weapons, shortcuts, and power-ups, there's something to be said for less being more in hindsight. Honestly, millions of us could draw out a map of Liberty City for memory right now, and it's down to every inch of its three island structure being so much fun to take in. There's a definable attitude to GTA 3, an aura of midnight fog, nigh on constant rain, and flickering streetlights punctuating its darkest moments. They're complemented by some of Rockstar's best characters and character moments, hilarious radio banda, and a mission progression that steadily introduces new elements at the perfect clip. Number 2. San Andreas like splitting the atom and deciding on a favorite half, or something I'm not a scientist, Rockstar's output after GTA 3 was in another galaxy of incredible. Both games took huge leaps in all the right directions with the teams themselves only growing, maintaining their youthful rebellious spirit but being able to expand what GTA was entirely of their own accord. In San Andreas's case, Rockstar devoted more time to role-playing elements, amping up customization through body types and clothing options for protagonist CJ. There were more weapons, cars, and items than ever, with the biggest open world gaming had ever seen. Not content with only bombing around cityscapes, San Andreas took us to a number of forest and wilderness areas, peppering them with secret vehicles and truly embracing the lampoon-inviting qualities of the American Midwest. The downside to all this rampant expansion was an absolutely ludicrous story, one that was fun and memorable, sure, but saw CJ go from gang-filled suburbs to the tops of mountains, down into science labs to grab jetpacks, and even the depths of high-rolling casinos. San Andreas is very much Rockstar throwing every single idea at the wall and forcing them to stick. Many, including myself, love how completely insane the full picture of San Andreas looks, but there is a better Grand Theft Auto game overall. Number 1. Grand Theft Auto Vice City you can break into a garage in Portland and make off with a banshee, base jump off Mount Chilia. You can take part in one of the most intense bank heists ever seen, or fly a tiny plane into the back of an in-flight cargo plane. You can do all these things and it won't compare to the career best heights that embody and reinvigorate every aspect of GTA Vice City. It's the pitch perfect tone that knows just how much to poke and prod at 80s American ephemera. It's the cast of celebrity cameos having fun with some fantastically over the top characters. It's being given a chainsaw and then chasing down a handful of goons who betrayed your employer. It's the finest sound soundtrack in gaming history. What Rockstar tapped into when setting GTA in the 80s was the perfect match of an already extravagant game with a time period that in itself was cooked and glazed in excess. You'd be hard pressed to find a more masturbatory decade where bright primary colors, perms and leather pants were deemed cool and make it more lovable. And yet, they found a way through both indulgence, commentary and gameplay in equal measure. Vice City is funny, biting, enjoyable mechanically and perfectly sized when it comes to how its missions and content is spread across the map. Taken as a whole, it is the best Grand Theft Auto, at least so far.
Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Don't forget to subscribe below, and also, the people who made this video, they're right here, so go and follow them and give them some love. If you want to see more content, there's probably some stuff flowing up above my head, why not check it out? It could be fun. I'm not your dad.